The many faces of Argentina setting for round five of the World Rally Championship. And after a brief return to Europe, the WRC heads back across the Atlantic to South America for one of the all-time classics. Gravel, gauchos and thousands of passionate fans await. World champion Sebastian Auger with a 29-point advantage after another maximum haul in Portugal. Teammate Yari Mati Latvala second despite scoring only two points last time out. Mads Osberg in his Citroen third. Mika Herbenen and Andreas Mikkelsen tied on 36 points. VW extending their championship lead and their winning streak with four wins in four events so far, opening a 69-point lead over Citroen as we prepare for one of the great challenges. This rally has to beat everything to offer for a whole driver, everything. Jumps, you know, fast sections, slow sections, wide, narrow, water splashes and really crazy people and the fans as well, so, uh, you know, it has everything. Uh, with the rain, uh, who has been here uh, a few weeks ago, yeah, uh, the gravel is just gone and we are driving on the rocks. Uh, a lot of uh, big holes as well in the road, so uh, many places where, uh, where we have to slow down and uh, to be cautious. Big stones the size of footballs so can disappear in the middle of a corner, pulled up in the road from the car before, so that's something you can't plan for, you know, but uh, it's a challenge we have to face. We have also the iconic stages in uh, Mina Clavero or El Condor, which are completely different from the rest, uh, over some really big rocks, and uh, it's, it's a very big challenge for the suspension. Uh, we have to drive this stage on the last day, so maybe till that a lot of things can already happen. And actually I would prefer if I don't have to push in this section. Rally Argentina based on the outskirts of Cordoba, some 700 kilometers northwest of the capital, Buenos Aires. The rally taking place over four days with 14 stages and more than 400 kilometers of tough gravel action. And the first challenge for the crews, a trip into Cordoba for a super special stage, specifically to entertain the locals as ever, turning out in force. Championship leader Ogier setting things in motion, posting a time no one would come close to matching. But at this stage, it's more about entertainment than quickest times, and the WRC's finest put on a show for the Argentine fans. And after that brief opening test, here's how things stand. Ogier, the leader, ahead of Osberg, Mikkelsen, Herberlin and Latvala. But this is just a taster for the classic Argentine stages to follow. Here's what lies ahead. Day two, the first full day of action, featuring four hugely challenging stages. A double run through Santa Catalina and the monster 52 kilometers of Ashkashinga. A big test of both car and driver, watched by commentator Paul King. So, Santa Catalina to La Pampa is our opening stage of Friday morning, and beware, recent rainstorms have left the roads rough, rocky and rutted. Some of the drivers describing this 27-kilometre stage as the toughest of the whole rally, but don't take my word for it, as Yari Mati Latvala makes his way into stage two. Let's hear from the drivers themselves to find out what we can expect from Santa Catalina. Okay, you start on the like open area, then you go first acceleration, then the ni like um, 90 lap between the stone walls. Then the road will remain for the first five kilometers like this, it's quite wide, sandy, um, flowing. But then after that, I have in my notes, I, I have a note that characteristic changes. The later in the stage you go, the rougher it gets. There's been so much rain, there's a lot more dips and uh, washaways than, than last year, so that makes it a bit tricky because some of, some of the dips are really in the fast places where you really don't want to slow down, but now they are just big enough that you are not sure if you can take it flat or, or not, so there can be some surprises over there. A fascinating insight and plenty to watch out for, it seems, in this daunting start to the morning loop. Stage two has been safely negotiated by Latvala, albeit using only two wheels at times.
Now, Mads Osberg has recently announced he's trying to adapt his driving style to be more like that of Sebastian Loeb's straight-line, no-nonsense approach that served the nine-time world champion so well in the DS3. All the straight-line driving in the world, though, can't prepare you for everything. Well, Heaven and warned of these deep compressions, and that is the danger. Hitting them at speed for the first time is always a risk. Just watch this again. The car is instantly flipped offline at the kicker, and at that speed, little Mads could do. He was just as much a passenger as his co-driver, Jonas Anderson. Osberg's first day over after just a handful of kilometers. Basically, it's a, it's a small jump in the right-hand corner, and... Uh, it was flat uh, in my pace notes. Still, I break a little bit, but uh, the rear kicks up a lot. Uh, I land on the front, and uh, and uh, with, when we're back down on the wheel, I, I touch something uh, on the outside. So uh, we destroy the front left corner, and also something happened with the gearbox. So uh, that's the end for now. Andreas Mikkelsen doesn't have a huge amount of experience of the Argentine status, but after showing sporadic signs of his undoubted pace in 2014, the Norwegian could well threaten for a strong finish this weekend. Mikkelsen, third fastest so far through this wet and muddy stage two behind his two Volkswagen teammates, although Andreas too hasn't survived entirely unscathed. Andreas, the front of the car looking a little bit battered. Is those compressions catching him out? Or have you been somewhere you shouldn't have been? No, we uh, took it very careful over the dips and uh, Quite careful in in the stage in general. So, um, but yeah, this was just on the inside, uh, just uh, some gravel. It was just so rough. So, but anyway, uh, clean stage, no problem, and a good rhythm. Mikko Hirvonen was finally back to his best in Portugal after an underwhelming start to his reunion with the M Sport team. <laughs> so, can the Finn challenge the all-conquering Volkswagens again? in South America. Despite the rough and rocky roads, some quite breathtaking speed at times in here. Oh, a sickening impact against the wall. And I think this could be two big names out on the very first stage of the day. A very strange incident, this one. Perhaps a misheard or a misread pace note, but whatever the cause, that too looks like game over for Mikko and Jarmo Leitnen. I just uh, completed my mistake. I just missed the note. There's one flat corner with the pump, and I, uh, some reason I just missed it. And uh, next one is the short right corner into, into the very tight left, and I thought it's, that's the flat corner. So uh, I just went, went way too fast. So my mistake. It didn't last for too long this time. Well, a breathless start to the rally again in Argentina. Danny Sordo has been drafted into the Hyundai squad to replace Juho Hannanen following his impressive display in Portugal. Unfortunately, though, the Spaniard's recent run of miserable luck has struck again. A turbo problem on this opening stage of the day has left the Hyundai bereft of power. And on these flat-out Argentine roads, we won't be seeing Sordo make much of an impression on the timesheets through these early stages. Rotten luck again for the experienced Spaniard. Danny, you're late to the stage, and what's happened? After some kilometres at the, at the end of the stage, the turbo was was very bad and uh, it was down in power and it's not power. I think the turbo broke or some pipe went off. I, I don't know, it's very strange, but we don't have any power. Well, with two of the drivers hoping to challenge for victory now out, the leaderboard after stage two makes very good reading for Volkswagen. Auger in control, teammates Lavala and Mickelson making it a VW lockout. Further back, it's been a good start for Yari Ketemar in his Fiesta R5. He's sixth, Albert Evans flying the flag for M Sport now after Hervenant's exit. So, a busy road section ahead for Danny Sordo and co-driver Mark Marty as the Spanish crew try to get to the bottom of that costly turbo problem. We'll check on their progress when we come back.
sunrise at the Zion Rally Argentina, where Sebastian Ogier currently heads up a VW123. This South American event, a breathtaking arena of natural beauty, but throwing up its own distinctive challenges as we now return to Paul King. On to stage three then, Kevin, and it's a biggie at just under 52 kilometers long as Kachinga is one of the longest of the entire season. So no respite for the crews after what's already been a brutal, bruising start. As first car on the road this morning, Sebastian Ogier would normally expect to lose time sweeping away the loose top layer of gravel. The damper stage to lessen the impact of this road sweeping effect, but these drier conditions here in Askachinga could prove costly for the world champion. And the first beneficiary would be Ogier's teammate Yari Mati Latvala. The Finn claimed his first podium in VW colours here 12 months ago and is always a threat on these treacherous technical gravel roads. As if to remind his world champion teammates that he may not have it all his own way in the hills above Cordoba. In stage three, it is Latvala's turn to make his mark. Watch that clock. A stunning turn of speed from Yari Mattia, full 10.3 seconds quicker than Ogier. He leapfrogs the Frenchman into the top spot. Well, as we heard earlier, it is currently a Volkswagen lockout of the podium positions with Andreas Mikkelsen running third for the German Mark second team. All right. Well, that heavy impact with the rock, though, could make this epic 52 kilometer stage even tougher. Well, you heard it there, damaged power steering. And Andreas will be glad he's put in all those hours in the gym. This has been an exhausting run through Askachinga for Mickelson. Oh my god. Good, good job. Oh. It's not completely gone. No? Huh? Not completely gone, like halfway. Okay. F***ing hard. Uh, I speak to the radio. Horrible, horrible, horrible. That's how Thierry Neuville described the opening stage of the day. But Hyundai do at least still have the Belgian running in the top four. Well, by the looks of it, he won't be enjoying stage three much either. That was a piece of the Belgian subgar parting company with the undercarriage of the I-20. Rally Argentina, as expected, providing a stern examination of the new car's durability. Round five of the championship is also providing a big test for Chris Meek's mental durability. Meanwhile, after a stunning podium finish in Monte Carlo at the start of the year, a run of three consecutive retirements is beginning to pile the pressure on the Northern Irishman. Big start, three left double Titans minus 50. Very long, one right. 100. Even more so following Osberg's early accident this morning, but so far so good for Meek, who's expressed his growing passion for these treacherous stages. Three right minus, opens. 60, line. Meek is fifth after the morning loop. 80 left, keep out. Must have 32 left minus. Watch it. The top two swapping places in stage three, then Lavala, the new leader, 3.3 seconds up on Ogier, and VW retaining their top three lockout, despite Mickelson's power steering problems. Neville and Meek rounding out the top five positions. Well, as the crews make their way into the long road section, back to the Carlos Paz service park, a few more running repairs required for the likes of Mickelson and Neville. It has certainly been a rough, tough morning for the WRC's finest here in the Cordoba countryside. Back at service, time for the drivers to reflect on that eventful morning. First up, let's hear from this man, Yari Mati Latvala. I had a really good feeling on the long, long stage, Aso, uh, Ashohinga stage. 52 kilometers, tires were working well. Really good feeling with the car and overall. It just, I was, I was honestly, I was enjoying the driving. On the right-hand corner, I, I hit something and I, uh, 
I lost the power steering, not the full power steering, I still have 20-30% of it, but um, it was really, really hard and just uh, some uh, small technical problems. So, uh, but, you know, the guys are good, so I'm sure they'll fix it. Now uh, we have a lot of work on the car because uh, it was horrible condition and we, we, we destroyed all uh, the sump cards, so uh, we're going to do some changes on the car to be a bit more careful this afternoon. Well, after the sanctuary of service, it's soon time for the surviving crews to head back out to the unforgiving two stages that caused so much drama in the morning loop. First up, we return to the 27 kilometers of Santa Catalina. And without further ado, let's rejoin that developing fight at the front. Two Volkswagens, of course, but first in the French corner, Sebastian Ogier. The world champion with pedal to the metal and hoping to continue the Gallic dominance of this event that has lasted for the last eight runnings of the South American round, courtesy of his compatriot Sebastian Loeb. Ogier is also seeking to add a victory in one of only two remaining rounds in the calendar he's yet to win. To do so, it seems it's his teammate Latvala he must get the better of. Ogier living life on the edge in his efforts to get back in front. Oh, and Lavala looking just as ragged. The current leader flying the flag for Finland. Starts the afternoon just 3.3 seconds ahead of his fellow VW driver. This bruising technical blast through Santa Catalina proved so dramatic earlier in the day. It looks like Latvala won't risk everything to stay ahead on this occasion. Better to err on the side of caution and live to fight another day. We'll know for sure when we see Latvala's time, though. Keep an eye on the clock. Ogier with an 18 minutes and 10 seconds. This is going to be tight. Not quite. The VW boys swap places again. Latvala slips behind, but there's only half a second in it. This was a really bad condition, so I tried to concentrate, to, to be careful, save the car, not to attack too much, and uh, the long one is the more, more important. Are you feeling confident for that again? Yeah, feeling the confidence is good, and uh, for me this was the, the hardest stage of the rally, so now it's done, so that, in a way, it's, it's good. Confident, but a touch relieved by the sounds of things. All change once again then at the top of the leaderboard. OJ back in front of Latvala, with Mickelson still there in third. Neville and Meek continuing to slip further adrift. OK, there is one more stage to come here, and it is the monster that is Askochinga. And more problems ahead for new boys Hyundai. More on that in just a moment. Welcome back to the Zeon Rally Argentina. Sebastian Ogier has just retaken the rally lead, but before we rejoin the main event, a quick look at what's been happening in the WRC2 Support Series. And Estonian Oit Tanak's day came to an abrupt end in the opening stage of the day, approaching the same place where Mads Osberg came unstuck. Tanak swerves left, clips a rock, and is sent into a high-speed roll. Fortunately, the crew emerging unscathed from that massive off. Plenty of damage to the car, though. Yari Ketamar found himself in sixth overall at the end of stage two, but after stopping to fix a puncture in stage three, he couldn't get his Fiesta R5 restarted. He would eventually get re-going, but it dropped the fin back down the order. Former Dakar rally winner Nasser Alatir knows all about endurance racing, and he's playing the long game here in Argentina too. The Qatari had said pre-events this rally was all about avoiding trouble, and he's done just that. He leads WRC2 after five stages. So, confirmation, Alatir leading the way. Ukrainian Yuri Protasov, two minutes and 45 seconds behind. Then it's Paraguay's Diego Dominguez completing the top three. OK, back to the main event now, and Paul. So, just one stage remains then after this breathless, brutal start to rally Argentina, and you could forgive the remaining crews one last gulp of apprehension. It's a return to the 52 kilometres of Azcachinga.
Well, the party continues stateside, and what a fight the passionate Argentine fans have witnessed today between the two Volkswagen drivers who already look set to dominate the 2014 championship. On every stage of the day so far, Yari Mati Latvala and Sebastian Ogier have swapped places out front, and for the sake of consistency, Latvala makes it four in a row. Another breathtaking run through the 52 kilometers of Askachinga sees the Finn smash his teammates' time by more than 18 seconds. Anything Moses can do, it might not be the Red Sea, but Latvala getting biblical on Ogier as he parts the waters and returns to the hallowed ground of the number one spot on the leaderboard. A couple of close shaves out there, it seems, but Yari Matti is loving every minute. Malcolm Wilson used to say to me, Yari Matti, you have to enjoy, you have to enjoy, then it will go. And that's the way what Malcolm said, he was right. So we know it's still a Volkswagen 1-2, but can Andreas Mikkelsen make it the perfect day for the German team and hold on to the final podium spot? As the Norwegian picks his way carefully through this increasingly rough and rutted stage. Unfortunately, though, the Norwegian's luck runs out midway through the day's final stage. No fault of Mickelson's, though, after what had been a terrific run. Basically, the alternator belt is gone. Uh, so, uh, after uh, around 40 kilometers, it ran out of battery. So, uh, not so much we can do, uh, sadly, but it was uh, very, very sad for the for me and the whole team. Well, this unforgiving day in the Argentine wilderness showing no sign of relenting, and what had already been a frustrating leg for Hyundai following Danny Sordo's early delay has just got even worse. This time, it's Thierry Neuville's turn to hit problems. The Belgian's I-20 also developing engine issues in Stage 5. Neuville's time loss is such that Elvin Evans in the M Sport Ford Fiesta is fast approaching. It's been a solid, sensible day's driving from the young Welshman, and you can bet Elvin will be on the radio to the team to get his mobile roadblock out of the way. Six left, Titans keeping. 100. Not much room on these narrow roads, but a quick tap on the rear of Neuville's I-20 should do it. Evans on his way and up into a fine fourth place. It's been a terrific day for the Brits all round in Argentina, with Chris Meek repaying the faith shown in him by the Citroen team after an error-ridden trio of rallies recently. Very early, one left over Derek Dibwala keep in. Despite his lack of experience on these roads, the Northern Irishman has relished the challenge of these treacherous stages that have claimed so many victims on this opening day. Meek making a splash in the Cordoba countryside, up to third by the end of the day. Probably passed a load of cars in. I don't know whether you've noticed them, but you're up to third at the end of day one. Right. I seen Mickelson, but I said to Paul with the finish line, we got a message that Neville had stopped, but I didn't see him. But Paul's seen him, so, and I'm the one supposed to be looking at the road. But oh, fantastic stage. Really, really enjoy it. I do struggle on the last 15, 20 k's down the hill, but to be honest, when we got the message that Mickelson had stopped and Neville had stopped, oh, I came right back. Like Meek, Robert Kubitzer could do with a bit of cheer after a torrid run of results. And like Meek, he hasn't been found wanting. It's been a steep learning curve again for the former F1 star, but survival is the name of the game for Kubitzer. And survive he has. The pole is fifth at the close of play on Friday. Thanks, Paul. So it's Latvala back out front then after that stunning run through stage five. The Finn just under 18 seconds ahead of Ogier with Chris Meek replacing Mickelson in third. Both Hyundai is forced to stop on the final stage of the day. So it's Elvin Evans fourth and Kubica rounding off an unlikely top five. That is it for now. A brutal opening day here in Argentina and every chance tomorrow will bring much more of the same. We'll see you again then.